I'm preaching from the first lesson. And we'll bring Johnny into it in a little bit as well. Moses' people have been wandering in the desert for 40 years at this point. They're about ready to cross over into the land of promise. And they begin to complain. They complain about having no water. They complain about being tired of eating the same food day after day for 40 years. If you could imagine, instead of manna, if you had pizza every day, every week, every month for 40 years, we would all be tired of it. And so what they say? They come to Moses complaining about what is happening in their lives. And Moses goes to God. God responds, tells Moses to go to a rock, and there for the second time, water comes out of a rock, and the people are given water. The matter continues. But in the meantime, because of their disbelief, God had to get their attention first in order for them to come to repentance for all of this to happen. So he sent vipers, rattlesnakes if you wish, poisonous snakes that would bite people and they would get sick. And if they weren't taken care of, they would die. So when Moses comes to God, God doesn't say go out and find this herb and that herb and mix it with a little bit of water, but instead he says, build a snake out of bronze, give it a particular metal, a particular patch, and raise it up on a pole so that whenever the people are bitten, if they would just look at the snake, the poison will leave their system and they will be well. Do you remember the movie, most of us who are older at least, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Fight. Well, there's a scene in there where Ferris wants to eat in a fancy restaurant. But the maitre d' says, uh, you got a reservation? No, sir. Well, you need a reservation to eat here. I don't have one, but I'm hungry. I see an empty table over there. Why can't we sit there and eat? Do you have a reservation? Well, Ferris, being the clever fellow that he is, decides there's a better way to do this. So he leaves the building, gets on the phone, makes a reservation for himself in somebody else's name, someone that will be recognized and famous comes back into the restaurant and Ferris and his friends eat at that fancy restaurant. God is telling the people of Moses and you and I that we do not need a reservation to come to him. God is ready, willing and able for us to come to him to seek forgiveness of our sins, to come to the meal that he provides us when we come to the table. Some of us may prepare by using prayer. Every Sunday we prepare by confessing our sins. But we need no reservation. Come and eat. Come and drink. All who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To believe come to the meal. That is the invitation. That is the good news for all. Give it and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so we do. 
You know, I could always tell people or, or, or pastor maybe that you're going to communion this Sunday, but that's not a reservation. That's just informing them. So we don't need to do anything special in terms of reservation, getting permission to come to the table. God has already given that. Just as he gave the people permission to look up the bronze snakes set on a pole and then they would be cured of the vipers, viper bites for all their complaining and bad mouthing and mushy mouth and grumbling. God is always, always ready to forgive us. We just have to come. you don't know if they're really sorry or not or just wanting to use the word so they can get something else out of it. Moses had the same kind of struggle, but he decides that he will seek for forgiveness for them, and therefore they are able to have the broad snake on the pole and to live. He took a chance that they were sincere. We're sorry. And so when you and I come to confession, whether it be on a daily basis, as we make the sign of the cross, as we get up in the morning, looking in the mirror and remember who we are, or on Sunday when we come to the words of confession, God looks at us and forgives us. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in that little piece of the confession that follows that, it is the first word that powers the rest of our life. Forgiveness. Repentance. That is the mark of the Christian faith. 
to trust that God will forgive and that you have been forgiven from the new life. A life of love and care and concern and compassion. Even though we still sin, the sins do not disqualify you from being confident that God loves you. God loves me. God loves everybody, everyone because he has promised that. Yet, lo, I'll be with you until the end of the age. It's his love, his forgiveness, and his strength that comes to us that allows you and I every day to live the kind of life of a person that is forgiven. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Going back to Ferris Bueller for just a moment, he did not have a reservation. That fancy restaurant, he did not have a reservation about his ability to do something about it. People who have lived the faith and as we grow in faith and love by God's grace, God wants us to remember that you and I have been given a sense of boldness that we might confess our sins when we come to the Lord's table, when we come to worship, even if we've done something terrible to a family member or a neighbor or to ourselves. That we have a sense of boldness and because of God's assurance that he forgives us. And it is here, in, in, in this place especially, this, this place that, that we recognize as being holy to us, that we stand before a holy God. And we receive Jesus. His body and His blood and His word coming and flowing through us every Sunday and during the week when we read our scriptures given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Your grace leaves us with open mouth and wandering hearts how You could be so so wonderful to us when we don't deserve it. And we thank you for that. Help us to continue to be amazed as we sing in our first hymn this morning. In the name of Jesus, your Son.